The abyssal zones of the Earth's oceans are a mysterious and not well understood place. Being pitch black and with extraordinary water pressure due to its immense depth, it is hard to imagine that anything could survive in this alien environment. But as you'll come to know, equally alien animals do in fact manage to survive in this inhospitable environment, and due to their extreme habitat, these animals have evolved to look and behave in ways unlike anything familiar to us on land. Here are just some of the most terrifying abyss-dwelling animals. Starting off this video is the gulper or pelican eel, an eel-like fish that is the only known member of the genus Eurypharynx and the family Eurypharyngidae. Closely related to true eels, these deep sea fish are rarely seen by humans and are most commonly found either near dying or dead in fishing nets. The most notable feature of these fish are sure to be their extraordinarily large mouths which can be 11 times the volume of the eel's whole body. In spite of its giant mouth, it is believed that the gulper eel's diet consists mainly of small crustaceans. This is supported due to the fact that the eels possess very small teeth, meaning that they would do little in the way of grasping struggling prey. Instead, the eels likely incorporate a strategy similar to that of the baleen whales, swimming into large groups of small fish and shrimp with its mouth open, and then scooping them up as it is propelled through the water. When the eel gulps said prey into its massive jaws, they take in a great amount of water, which the eel slowly expels through its gill slit. The lower jaw of the eel itself is hinged at the base of the head, which with no body mass behind it, makes the head look disproportionately large compared to the rest of the fish. The odd head of these fish is not the only thing worth noting however, as pelican eels are very different in appearance from true eels. They completely lack pectoral fins, swim bladders, likely due to the immense depths at which they live, as well as lacking scales due to limited ocean currents. Unlike many deep sea animals, gulper eels have very small eyes, although it is believed that the eyes evolved to detect faint traces of light rather than form images. Gulper eels also have a very long whip-like tail, which helps to propel the animal through the water. They also possess a complex organ at the end of the tail, known as a photophore. Through bioluminescence, this light-producing organ glows pink and can give off occasional red flashes. This likely helps in luring its preferred prey of crustaceans to its location and then engulfing them once they are in range. These animals also utilise their large mouths to appear larger in a form of a threat display as shown through this video meaning that in their environment, there must be some sort of predatory selective pressure that has resulted in this display feature. What exactly preys on the eels is unknown, but in the future, evidence for why the eels display in such a manner may just be found. Viperfish are sure to be one of the more iconic of abyssal animals. And while looking like something out of a certain Ridley Scott movie, these fish are relatively small, with the largest animals only reaching around 60 centimetres. Even so, these animals have a formidable appearance, and as we'll get into, are fearsome predators of the abyssal zone. Viperfish contain all fish of the genus Chorleodus, a group that contains nine recognised species, being a part of the Stomiaforms, an order that contains the related dragonfish, hatchetfish and lightfishes, which all form this remarkable grouping along with other related genera. The most distinguishing characteristic of these fish is their remarkably long teeth, which are so large that they cannot fit into the jaw and instead curve past the animal's eyes. These sharp teeth are likely used by viperfish to impale their prey at high speeds, which is supported by the adaptations found in the first vertebra behind the head which by its structure works as a shock absorber, so that when the viper fish hits its prey, the sudden decrease in speed doesn't damage the fish. Once subdued, the viper fish's long needle-like teeth immobilise the prey, from where it is then swallowed whole, also possessing a hinged skull if the prey proves to be particularly large. Viper fish have been noted to be patient hunters, and have been known to remain emotionless for hours in waiting for prey to approach. To speed this up, viperfish utilise photophores on the ventral side of their bodies and on the end of a long spine reminiscent to the unrelated anglerfish, 
which the viperfish can turn on and off, attracting animals to its position. And with their dark coloration, they are nearly invisible, allowing them to remain undetected to their prey until it is too late for them. Because viperfish live in environments largely inaccessible to humans, little is known about their habits. Viperfish are thought to engage in a daily vertical migration, as they have been observed in the mesopelagic region during the night, seeming to be some form of daily vertical migration, although more direct observation is needed to confirm this assumption. Barrel eyes, members of the genus Opistoproctidae, are very unusual fish, and their appearance is more than enough to confirm this. What you would think to be the animal's eyes are actually its nares, which are analogous to nostrils. The actual eyes of the fish are these tubular-shaped organs at the top of the head, which oddly face upwards instead of forwards or out to the sides like in other animals. These eyes are extremely light-sensitive, and are capped by bright green lenses, likely to maximise this light sensitivity. Their preferred prey consists of copepods, but how they captured this small prey was until recently unknown. The animals possess eyes that seem to be fixed in place, and seems to provide only a tunnel vision view of whatever was directly above the fish's head, so how exactly barrel eyes managed to accurately reach their food was unknown. That was until a live specimen was brought up to the surface in a net, and the fish managed to survive a remarkable several hours in a shipboard aquarium. Within this controlled environment, researchers were able to conclude that the fish were capable of rotating their tubular eyes as it turned its body from a horizontal to vertical position. Barrel eyes share their deep sea environment with siphonophores, which drag their over 10 metre long tentacles through the ocean, picking off numerous copepods and small fish that the barrel eye also consumes. It is speculated that barrel eyes take advantage of the jellyfish and carefully manoeuvre through the siphonophore's tentacles, picking off the captured organisms while also being protected by the transparent fluid-filled shield covering the fish's head, protecting its vital eyes from the siphonophore's stinging cells. In addition to their headgear, barrel eyes possess a variety of adaptations for deep sea life, their large, flat fins allow them to remain nearly motionless in the water, also enabling them to manoeuvre very precisely, akin to man-made ROVs. Unlike some other abyssal animals, barrel eyes lack photophores, but do possess a luminous organ inside of the anus, which effectively serves the same purpose as the previously mentioned structure. Strange fish are not the only oddities to be found in the deepest parts of the ocean, as the giant isopod can testify. These massive crustaceans, which comprise of 20 species in the genus Bathonomus, are closely related to the land-dwelling woodlouse, although as their name suggests, are much larger, with the largest of individuals being able to reach an astonishing 75cm in length and around 1.7kg in weight. These animals, along with the giant squid, are examples of deep-sea gigantism, the tendency for species of invertebrates and other deep-sea dwelling animals to be larger than their shallow water counterparts. Proposed explanations for this type of gigantism include colder temperatures, food scarcity, and the reduced predation pressure brought on by the deep sea, promoting larger growth in the process. These giant isopods are found in abundant numbers off of the coasts of the Atlantic, Pacific and Indian Oceans, and while of little interest to most commercial fisheries, they are infamous for attacking and destroying most fish caught in trawls, although interestingly, some have been brought into public aquariums. Their morphology closely resembles their terrestrial relatives, and are also capable of curling up into a ball for protection, exposing their armoured exoskeleton to their attackers. These animals mostly feed on dead whales, fish and squid that fall on the sea floor, but have been noted to attack live fish. One remarkable account that was showcased in a 2015 episode of Shark Week filmed a dogfish shark that was stuck in a deep water trap alongside a giant isopod, with the arthropods latching onto and eating the animal's face. As food is scarce in their environment, it is believed by researchers that giant isopods live in a constant state of semi-hibernation due to the time between meals. 
These animals are used to these long periods of famine, and in captivity have been noted to survive over five years without any source of food. When a significant source of food is encountered, like a whale carcass, giant isopods have been noted to gorge themselves to the point of compromising their movement, and with how rare it is to come across food in their environment, it is no wonder as to why they do this. And now, we come to the last animal in the video, and saving the weirdest for last, here are the remarkable sea spiders. These strange organisms belong to the class of marine arthropods known as Pycnogonida, and have a cosmopolitan range, being found in oceans all around the world. This class is a diverse one, and contains over 1,300 known species, with the leg spans ranging from 1mm to 70cm. Their name is a misleading one, as sea spiders are not true spiders or even arachnids, and while placed in the Chelicerata alongside spiders and Eurypterids, they are unrelated, having diverged from the rest of Chelicerata around 500 million years ago in the Cambrian, although recent genetic evidence suggests they may be the sister group to all living arthropods. Because of their thin body and legs, no respiratory system is necessary in sea spiders, with gases instead moving by diffusion. This brings us to the elongated legs of sea spiders, which in some smaller species, the muscles of their legs consist of only a single cell, surrounded by connective tissue, meaning that the animals are very lightly built. Sea spiders are carnivorous and are primarily scavengers, walking across the ocean floor or swimming just above it using an umbrella pulsing motion to find sponges or animal carcasses if they are present. Like the giant isopod, sea spiders in the frigid waters in Antarctica can grow to large sizes, reaching diameters of 70 centimeters, filling in the niche of crabs due to their absence and taking advantage of the plentiful resources on the ocean floor. The animals, aside from their proboscis, are predominantly all leg, in that they really don't have a body. The legs are all connected to a single segment of the spider's body, and sea spiders both reproduce and feed through their legs, with the animal's organs being distributed throughout their long extremities. Now, there are many fascinating and equally bizarre abyss-dwelling animals that I didn't have the time to mention, although in the future, a part two could potentially be made if you want to see more. And with that, I thank you for watching this video, and I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to see more from this channel, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time, whenever that may be.